Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story was being underpaid and verbally abused, told my coworkers what I was making, finessed my way to a job with double my salary, told my coworkers what I would be making, and quit my job. The second story, Karen and hysteria about raising her child. The third story, I got my titled relative, who I had previously helped to get a job here, fired. The first story is, I quit my job, told my boss I doubled my salary into the six figures to shut down his counteroffer, and used wage transparency to get my coworkers raises. I graduated college in May 2020, early days of the pandemic. During the initial economic downturn, most companies had hiring freezes and it was near impossible to find a job. After a plethora of applications, a few interviews and mostly being ghosted by employers, I received a job offer from a tech startup in the southern US for 55k salary and a $2,500 starting bonus. Coming from a low-income single-parent household and working three minimum wage jobs to put myself through college, this was life-changing money for me. I snatched up the offer, spent my summer working before my late summer 2020 start date. After moving down south for the job, I quickly realized that this very small startup was run by some anti-vaxxer, COVID-irresponsible conservatives. I later realized they also had no idea how to run a tech company. My boss was an early 40s man who needed to flaunt his money and his Tesla to feel good about himself. He would keep his office door open and talk on speakerphone to arrange the purchase of a boat, would often arrive at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. and leave at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. He'd complain about his wife, ogle women, and sometimes young girls, that passed by the office and spent most of his lunch hours at the bar. Worse yet, he would regularly insult myself and the other co-workers. He took advantage of the fact that there were only three analysts, young men fresh out of college, completely male startup, who were nervous about ruffling feathers in corporate hierarchy and would tolerate being belittled for fear of being fired. He also hated the idea of us working remotely, but would himself work remotely from his lake house all the time and regularly took off work to go to college football games or weekends at the casino. In my first week, I shared with the other analyst who started with me that I was making 55k and had a 2.5k starting bonus. He said he was making 50k with no starting bonus. Same qualifications, same job. Hmm. Live on client calls, my boss would ridicule the very normal speed I would navigate in Excel or while screen sharing our web platform for clients, as if they would be impressed by moving at the speed of light. It got to the point where clients would ask him to stop or felt uncomfortable, because he was being unprofessional. He also on several occasions would screenshot a client meeting from his iPad if the client was a woman he deemed attractive. After the meeting, he would show the iPad photo and say something objectifying. Or who wants this client if we sign them? Haha. <laughs> Classic man with two young daughters, right? He prided himself on giving his daughters a Christian education. Retrospectively, I'm embarrassed that I didn't speak up but I was a 22-year-old that didn't understand what the appropriate channels were to do so. We didn't have an official HR department, and I couldn't afford to lose my job and pay back my starting bonus. He also sexually harassed me. I was the only guy at the company that exercised a lot and ate healthy. Plus, I was stylish and don't just wear college sports team polo shirts. So my boss would pick on me and make unwarranted comments like, what do you do this weekend? Put up an adult swing at your house? Those glasses make you look like a pea. More comments about my body, fashion, and sexuality that I'm choosing to forget. My mental health deteriorated over a few months and I became depressed, unmotivated, and believing some of the things my boss said about me. Fast forward to summer 2021, approaching a year at the company and I snapped out of it somehow. I began researching on LinkedIn to compare my responsibilities with other jobs. Turns out my job was actually called a customer success manager, implementation specialist, onboarding manager, solutions consultant, I was doing multiple jobs in one and being called an analyst. I was building decks, pitching our product to CTOs and CIOs, sending SaaS agreements, onboarding new users, encouraging clients to renew their agreements, everything under the sun. The three analysts were being called analysts to make us think we were low on the totem pole and that we should be grateful for our salaries. I changed up my resume and started applying like mad to other tech jobs with the above titles. I would apply with a resume and cover letter then immediately go to the company LinkedIn page and see if any of my university alumni worked there, connect with them and the recruiter, send personalized messages, demonstrate intent, the whole recruiting hell game. 
I started getting calls from recruiters, who would then frequently tell me that the budgeted salary range for these positions was 80k plus, some even approaching six figures, and they were talking to me. One year out of college and sending me through to the next round with the hiring manager? No way. I think this was dumb luck coupled with the great resignation effect, as I was taking all these calls in October 2021, and labor was in demand. My 50k coworkers slash fellow analyst began noticing I would step out to my car for phone calls on occasion, and eventually asked me one on one if I was interviewing at other places. I said hypothetically if I was, I would be doing it at places that were actual tech companies, that had titles matching our job descriptions, and at these hypothetical companies the salaries go up to 100k for even our limited experience level. The next day he came back into the office and started asking me where I was finding these jobs, and asked me to help him tailor his resume. I gave him a proper LinkedIn networking course, redid his resume for him and sent him on his way. He started getting bites too for local jobs, I was only considering fully remote, that were 20k plus more than he was making. After some late nights of panel interviews with West Coast companies and prepping for take home presentation assignments, and doing much of this during work hours too, I eventually got 5 different offers, and leveraged them to get the highest possible salary at the place I felt was the best cultural fit. 110k with 15% bonus, 126.5k all in, more than double what I was making. I immediately told my coworker what I was going to be making, and that he should demand more money, as I left, because he would have to do an sh ton more work in my absence. The day I received my first offer I gave a 10 day notice to my manager, then called up my boss to tell him I was leaving. He asked me what my new offer was and offered to run it up the flagpole at our parent company, to see if they could counter offer. I said it won't be worth your time. He persisted what's the number, and I said it's over 6 figures. Quiet for a few seconds. Oh yeah we can't match that. Well congratulations. Thanks. Thanks for all the experience. My last day will be in 10 days. Click. In the next few weeks after I left, each of my coworkers got 10k bonuses and started to get treated a lot nicer. They also got raises to 80k and 75k. Of course kept secret from one another. But they both told me. Company got scared and couldn't afford to lose more labor. Kicker is they're hiring two more fresh out of college white boys for May 2022. Paying them 50k. What did I learn? We have the power. Tell people how much you make. Organize with your coworkers. Be transparent. It's not you versus coworkers. It's all laborers versus the bosses. The second story is... How my dad destroyed a Karen and her brat son at the grocery store. Hey there everyone. I don't know if this is where this goes, but hey. Figured it was a good story to share. So this story takes place about 6 years ago while I was working at a grocery store in my small town. At this grocery store we have a side exit slash entrance, and a restricted back area only meant for employees. We're meant to call police for trespassing if we see someone back there but I never did, cause I thought it was wrong to screw up someone's day for no reason. Right by the back exit was the road to my house, and my dad had driven my mom to work that day, and was on his way back home with my mother in the passenger seat. Now my dad isn't a big guy, but he's a scary guy. He may be only 5'10", but he's built like a cage fighter and works out daily. Gun to my head, the only reason why I could think of for my father to want to stay in shape is because he works in construction. I really don't know why he works out so hard. But anyways, while my father was driving down the road, he saw this 12 year old round little turd of a boy proceeded to slap a little 10 year old girl across the face at the back of the store. So my dad slams on the brakes, and immediately gets out of the car and yells at this kid, how it's not right to put your hands on a woman, and that the kid should leave now. Should be the end of the story, right? Lesson learned. Everything's set right in a way. We all know it isn't over, come on. This kid clearly wasn't used to getting yelled at or told he wasn't allowed to do something, because this part I was there for and heard. Me and my boss were outside taking care of trash and whatnot, when we hear a blubbering prepubescent screech of F you, stay the F away from me B, I effing hate you. So my boss comes over to the screeching and sees the brat marching through the side exit, so my boss approached him and said, hey, you can't be screaming here that isn't allowed. As the fat sack of crap marched past us and pointed back, screeching again, it's cause he's an effing a-hole. That's when we see a man walking down the alley and my boss leans over to me asking, isn't that your dad? All I could muster in response was, God I hope not, which followed seconds after with my dad calling out hey buddy to me. So my dad brought us up to speed, and we all figured that was the end. Nope. Me and my boss go back into the store, and we hear what sounds like whale mating sounds. We see at the service center, laying down on his back on the floor and throwing a temper tantrum. The brat? My boss immediately brings people up to speed on what happened, and all sympathy dries up for him immediately after. My boss informs the kid that he's not allowed in the back of the store, anymore, and that if his parents don't come and get him now that the police will be called. So the turd pulls out his cell phone and calls his mom, and I head back to doing my job. 
I, like an idiot, thought it was over. The entitled Karen of a mother shows up in his pictured perfect Karen. Haircut and attitude honed to perfection. So she immediately gets out of the car and walks over to her filthy little crotch spawn and says, Oh, sweetheart, who made you cry? My dad, apparently too entertained to leave or something, pipes up before the kid, Yeah, I did that. He brings the entitled mother up to speed on what happened and how her son hit a little girl. She scoffs and goes, That gives you no right to try and parent my child, even if he was misbehaving. That's a job for the parent, not you. My dad, already fully grasping the type of person he was dealing with, responded with, well, yeah, you weren't around and I wasn't about to let a little kid hit another for no reason. She got offended by this, screaming in response, I'm sorry I was busy being a good mom at home and making my kid dinner, you a-hole. You have no right to parent my kid. My dad, acting like he just understood, goes, Oh, I get it. He's just copying what he sees at home. Clearly, your husband must smack the snot out of you if you think it was okay for him to be beating up on little girls. Karen did not like that response and said, I'm gonna get my husband. He's 6'4 and is gonna kick your A. My dad actually laughed at this and said, go ahead and effing bring him in, B. We'll see who beats who. It was about then Karen realized she had lost, loaded her spawn and his bike into her minivan and drove off. She ended up coming back with her husband later and my dad actively ate candy and laughed in his face about the skid mark his jeans created. The man never touched my dad, possibly due to the police station that the grocery store's parking lot actively touched. The Karen, her husband, and her kid were all banned from the store, and my manager bought my dad a box of candy. And the last story is... Why I snitched on my uncle and got him fired. He's peeved. I had basically had it. I knew it was coming, it was only a matter of time. I reported my uncle for time theft. He's in A, and was coming in and clocking in two hours early and having the morning front desk worker clock him out an hour after he went home. I caught on to this really fast as I'm on morning shift with her. I reported this to management and he's gone now. I stuck out my neck to get him his job here a month or two ago. However, he's made an absolute A of me when I'm already on thin ice at this place. I'm not liked here and the only reason they took my word for him is because I'm related to the man who owns the hotel. He was SHing the bed here really bad. Being late, being high, misusing the internet and sleeping. The last draw for me was when he calls me one night while he was working on it and tells me to check out the Wikipedia talk page belonging to the night auditor he replaced. I showed him this guy's profile on Wiki. The edits he made to his page had been reverted, but I was still able to view them in the page's edit history. He had went into the bathroom and took a picture of himself and he uploaded it to Wikimedia Commons, and subsequently posted it to his talk page. He also added an embarrassing picture of me on there. The worst part is his username was my full name followed by an obscenity. This is not even the first time he trolled Wiki using my name. He was just finished at this point. I reported him for time theft instead of the Wikipedia edits, because I had previously gotten in trouble for vandalizing the Wiki at work. So he's sacked and I have hopefully improved my standing in the company. The front desk person who was clocking him in early gave me away, and let him know I dimed him out. However, I live with my uncle, and I've been avoiding going home to avoid confronting him. He's a violent felon. I've been using my 50% discount to stay at the hotel the last two days to avoid going home. He hasn't gotten a hold of me. Thanks for the support, guys. This has been a roller coaster. Subscribe, hit the like button, and turn on notifications.